Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan Al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Empowered to Grow. This is your host, Hanan Ubasha, and I'm super excited to have a very intriguing and interesting personality for me today to be interviewing Dr. Lisa Petty, the midlife alchemist. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm very interested in chatting with you today. Thank you. Well, I start with the, the name of the show, Empowered to Grow. And I like asking, what does that phrase mean to you? Or how did it resonate with you when you knew of the name of the show? Interesting, uh, because that is something that it sort of has been my driving force and the driving force for the work that I do with women. It's really about waking up that spark of mm -hmm. confidence uh, knowingness, awareness of what we each have brought to this lifetime, right? Why we're here. Yeah. Um, and it gets buried, I believe, in, in yeah. the doingness of life and the expectations on women that that spark of awareness and confidence and um, knowing that you can do it that gets buried and lost. And so for me, anytime that we can rattle the tree a little bit or uh, whatever imagery works, like pour water on the seed or spark the fire, anytime yeah. we can do anything like that to wake a woman up to what she is capable of being, mm -hmm. that just, as you can tell, probably lights my fire. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And that's being empowered to grow. That's kind of the definition of being empowered to grow. So from that perspective, you are empowered to grow. And I know that you empower others to grow as well. So can you share a little bit about your story with us? And especially the part that's very intriguing about the midlife alchemist. I'm very curious about that. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Okay. So I started in uh, working as a holistic nutritionist with mm -hmm. women close to probably two decades ago. So th that was my first foray into the serving profession and helping women achieve. Uh, initially, it was sort of the physical well-being, right? That mm -hmm. uh, ability to have the energy, the mood to, to be in the physical shape that they wanted to be and all of that kind of thing. And whenever you're in uh, a, a coaching profession, that, that sort of thing, or a helping profession, you find that, that your the people that you work with sort of travel the same journey that you do. And so in my case, I'm talking about, we all got a little bit older together, right? <laughs> yeah. And as, as I was getting older and the women that I worked with were getting older, what they, what we were talking about changed. And uh, what, what I became really aware of is that women were finding it much more difficult to commit to themselves. Mm. So they would, mm. they would say that, they wanted to release some weight or they would say that they wanted to have more energy or not be so cranky or get better sleep or whatever it was. And they would agree to whatever we decided that the strategy was going to be that we were going to do. And then they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so women would come back to me and I'd say, so how did you do with that thing that we said we were going to do? And they were like, yeah, I didn't do it. And I'm like, okay, no worries. Let's try again. Can we put that yeah. back on the agenda for next time? Yes, we can. And then it didn't happen. So mm -hmm. after a while, I got a, you know, a bump on my head from hitting my head against the wall. <laughs> like, what's going on <laughs> what here? What can I do over Why here? Aren't, yeah, what, what am I not doing yeah. in order to help these women? And, uh, and or what else is going on? Mm -hmm. So what happened for me was my children started leaving me the bumps. Mm -hmm. So they went off to university and, you know, um, my youngest was just starting to dig around and I, I knew that the house was going to be empty soon. Right. He's just starting to dig around into the university brochures. And I'm like, uh Oh, I need yeah. to fill my, my life up with something new. So as a very much midlife woman, I went to university 
and got my master's degree. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I studied was what midlife women experience when they're eating. So what gets in the way of their eating? How do they choose what they eat? What is it like for them to eat? Well, the research bug bit. And then I decided, well, it's not just about eating, is it? Right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot involved in well-being and, and committing to ourselves. So I did my doctorate starting at, I was very perimenopausal when I started mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, very, very midlife. Uh, so I, I did my doctorate on what gets in the way of women taking care of their well-being across the board. I love, that. love that. And so what, so, and I'm sure our conversation will lead into this, but the alchemy comes into it when, when you think about, you know, you get to midlife, everything's changing, your body's changing, relationships change, uh, your kids leave home, your parents might need you in a different way. All of these things are changing in your life mm -hmm. and it can feel pretty crappy. Yeah. And so we have an opportunity to reframe our experience at midlife to make it something else. So mm -hmm. we can take something mundane and turn it into something absolutely marvelous. And that's the idea of alchemy, taking the situation that you have and to use your phrase, empowering yourself to turn it into something magical and marvelous. So that's what the alchemy is all about. I love that. And, and as you said, this is it's rarely spoken of unless we're talking about symptoms of perimenopause or menopause or whatever it is. Um, we're talking right. about like, you know, the physical symptoms or, but talking, not just, you're not just dealing with the emotional, the physical, the mental, you're also dealing with, with the overall life change. And that's the holistic part. That's the holistic nutritionist in you as well, coming in and yes. saying, coming look at that's all right. of it together. And, and this is yes. also functional medicine. I mean, you're addressing it all and, and wrapping it all so they can see it for themselves as well and see what can I do yeah. about it and how can I change and transform? Absolutely. I Absolutely. love this. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. Salute you for that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And um, okay. So from that perspective, then from where you're standing right now and today, what advice would you go back and impart on your 19 year old self? Mm. So uh, you may or may not know that I recently wrote a book based on my doctorate and my research, and it's called forget about having it all. Mm. <laughs> so if I could go back in time and say anything to my 19 year old self and to any 19 year old woman who's listening right now, forget about having it all. There is so much pressure on women to have it all, have the career, have the partner, have the kids, have the white picket fence, have the McMansion, have the two cars, go on a vacation every year, make sure your house is spotless, wear a size four, be perfect in everything. It's exhausting. Yep. And nobody, <laughs> nobody says to women, nobody said to me, what do you want? Mm. Not you know, it's, it's like you go to a buffet, right? And you stand at the huge table with all of these opportunities in front of you with your plate. You don't pick everything. If yeah. you don't like uh, oysters, you don't put them on your plate. Mm -hmm. Yet the 19 year old me would have gone through, well, I have to have a bit of that because I'm supposed to, right? Yes. I'm supposed to have there. it all. So I should yeah. have. Exactly. It's there. And if I don't have it, then I'm letting all the women down. Right. So, mm. so I think it's really important to forget about having it all yeah. and think about what do you want? I call that subjective success parameters. And I only, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I started talking about, I started realizing that I needed to redefine my own success parameters at the age of 40. And after earning my doctorate degree and just standing there and saying, what just happened? Uh, I'm not, I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm not fulfilled. And I, I don't know what to do right now. And I had to say, okay, it was a really long stop of let me redefine what success means to me. Let me redefine and actually discover what do I want and what do I want to do with my life? And that was a transformational point for me. And, and this is what I keep advocating for now. So Wouldn't I it agree. Be wonderful though, if you knew that at 19, Oh my gosh, yes. what do I want? <laughs> Hold up, right? Yes. Someone has said, forget about everything else. Forget it. Like, what do you want? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Life would be so different. That's, that's, that's so true. And, you know, I think this is the, the essence of what empowerment, self-empowerment is about, is just having that ability and that 
capability of being able to stop and say and ask yourself, what do I want? And then go and pursue it. And then realize possibly that's not what I imagined, or I, I want to delve a bit deeper mm-hmm. as, as you've done, you know, between your master's and your doctor degree and how, and first being um, the holistic nutrition and just following through the journey that is self-empowerment. And that's how I think of it at least. Well, I think one of the key things in, in all of that is curiosity. So I was born with it in spades. Like I have so much curiosity. <laughs> My daughter used to say that I'm nosy. I'm not nosy. I'm just curious. I want to, I want to know about you and your experience. And I want, want to know what that's like. And I want to know what that's like. And I, you know, but my spirit animal is a hummingbird because a mm. hummingbird will just, you know, go from one pretty thing to the next pretty thing, right? They just yeah. pop along and not to say that I, that I have focus problems because I don't, but it's mm-hmm. more about, okay, I've had that full experience, right? Like the hummingbird draws the sweetness out of the flower yeah. and then moves on to the next one. And mm-hmm. that's, that again is sort of permission yes. that we're not given when we're really young. It's like, okay, find a job and keep for 40 years. Well, that's not even a reality anymore, but yeah. just that idea of, you know, you're, you've trained to be a dental hygienist, retire as a dental hygienist. Well, no, if you decide that's not what you want to do, you have permission to change your mind. That's true. That's true. So from that perspective, then let's look at the other end of the spectrum and your 90 year old self, the nine zero, Mm. what would you like her to thank you for today? I think I hope that my 90 year old self says, well done you, you know, Mm. that you poked in all the corners that you weren't afraid to, um, I've always felt a little bit like the black sheep in the family and the black sheep in society, because I was always standing going, but why are we doing that? But (laughs) I don't understand what that's all about. But, you know, I'm always, but why I don't get what's going on here. Um, But that also takes courage to, to, do so ask the question do the research sit with what feels good to you and then the courage to go okay i've made my choice and i'm pretty much going to stick with it i'm very open minded i will change my mind but when it's something that i've decided on a soul level like this is this is the right path for me uh it it sometimes you get tested right you get tested sure. where people don't support you cultures don't support you um, and so just to have the wherewithal. So I hope the 90 year old me goes, yeah, you're pretty, you did a pretty good job of, uh, <laughs> following your heart and sticking with it when you needed to, and moving on when you didn't, you were a hummingbird. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> I hope I she says that. I hope she says good job hummingbird. <laughs> I'm sure she will. I mean, just thinking of, of your journey and how you've transformed, but you're not only transforming by yourself. And I think that's the definitely where you're coming from a place of service. And that's a beautiful part is that you're also helping others to transform along the journey with you. And and that is, is, um, is a definite well done. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, it's interesting. And I have to say that sometimes, um, and I'm sure you have this experience too, you brush up against people who see you and they see what you're doing and it, it irks them either because they want to, and they're not, Or they want to, and they don't know how, or you shake the foundations of their being so much by your very existence that they don't even know how to um, perceive you, right? So, so that's the other challenge for women who are, are willing to do this and to be who they fully, who they are in this lifetime is that you're not always going to get support. No, no, because you're also, um, they're self-projecting their own limitations onto you and yes. your, your defiance kind of intimidates them. And right. I've, I, yeah, I've had this a lot from people who are very close to me and people who hardly know me and, you know, I get the, but it's easy for you. I'm like, it's easy what's for easy you. exactly. I'm right. like, I, I, it was never easy. I have been doing this since I was 18 years old and I, I gave myself permission to transform with every phase and to do the uncomfortable when, when the time comes and to, well, actually to challenge society, you know, Mm -hmm. all the, 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 the external, the external environment and to also get all the no's and to feel the defeat, uh, the times of defeat and to feel that crushing times of saying, 
am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, mm -hmm. like you were questioning yourself but between mm -hmm. that transition of why aren't, why aren't people listening to me? What am I saying that's not valuable? Or why, right. you know, why aren't people engaging with me? Why aren't they doing what I tell them? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I've, I've gone through the experience. I remember when I first started my business, um, when I ventured out by myself and started my business like four or five years ago, um, the business doctor, the, the first, my first unofficial slogan was, I've been there, done that. I'll show you how not to do it. Because right. it was, well, that, I right. thought there was a lot more value there. Yes. But as you said, it's it's um it is about limitations and it is about self projection and and I think it also takes, as you said, a lot of courage to realize that it's not about you, it's about them. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. at a point in time in my life, until it really solidified as a belief inside of me, it was a mantra for me. <laughs> like mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> yes, I think that's really important to say that that it's really that you have to come to a place where you realize that you're a good person. You know what your motives are. Yeah. You know um, that you you want them to feel empowerment. It's not that you empower them. You inspire them to find their own empowerment, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that um, it, it's okay if people don't like you. It's okay if people question you, challenge you, disagree with you. Like, could you imagine what world we would live in if everybody agreed all the time? I would be bored out of my mind. But anyway. <laughs> Agreed. And yeah. Right. So, so yes, to get to that place where you can go, it's okay. If you don't like me, I'm okay with that because I do. Yeah. I think I'm a pretty good person. Right. Yeah. And I have lots to learn and I make mistakes and I'm, you know, sometimes people, um, uh, could accuse me of being perhaps a little impatient because I'm just, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't understand, you know, where the missing link is. So these are things that I'm working on. But for the most part, I'm a good person. And if, and I'm not in your jam, then that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. So, okay. I love how every conversation is just leading on to the next question. So this is actually the last question in this part from the perspective or, okay, let me start again. You're on a okay. stage and yes. you're talking to tens of thousands of women. Mm -hmm. And the topic is about being empowered to grow. What would be that last message you leave them with? Um, me, it's all about listening to yourself and being your own advocate. Uh, get out of your head and feel the, feel the truth in your body. We all have so much wisdom in our bodies that mm. as women, we have, it's been trained out of us, right? We've been told, oh, you're too emotional. Oh, there's no such thing as intuition. Oh, you must be logical. You know, do your pro. Or you're hormonal. Lesson. Or, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Um, but, but that's where our wisdom is. And, and it's really important for us to remember that men and women are different, right? Yes. And women are given these these different ways of knowing and moving through the world and being, mm -hmm. and that, you know, that's, that's our juice, right? And, and um, don't be afraid to, to use all of those things because they're a gift and really important that we sort of embrace those things. I love that. I love that. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. I mean, you've shared like nuggets, multiple nuggets of wisdom all across and I, I really do believe that everything you're working towards and everything you shared is just what women need to hear. I think we, we need to keep reaffirming and reassuring that our gut and our intuition are, are intact, maybe buried a bit, maybe right. kind of tarnished just because we were told, yeah, out of right. practice. I say uh, our conditioning of, um, in this amazingly goes across cultures of you can't, you won't, you shouldn't, that mm -hmm. we get just mm -hmm. kind of skews us a bit, but yes. um, it is worth noting and, and remembering that we've got it. The power is within us to transform, to be the alchemists of our own life and right. to kind of really find our, our North star in every way. Yes. Yes. Fabulous. So where can our viewers and listeners find you in virtual space? I am just my name, lisapetty.com. Uh, and I have an offer for, for women who want to sort of practice getting back into their bodies and having that sort of well-being check-in. It's called uh, a well-being check-in and it's at lisapetty.com slash check-in. And then mm -hmm. I'm on all the, all the socials at Dr. Lisa Petty. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. 
Great. And we're going to be putting anyway, all your links in the show notes so they can get easy access to you. Wonderful. Well. Thank you so much, Lisa. This has been so valuable. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think um, Lisa said it all. You find your true north, believe in yourself and um, self-empowerment starts from within. But more importantly, it is who you are that you need to believe in as well it's to become the best version of yourself possible. As always, wishing you love, abundance, and prosperity. And we're going to see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananubasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.